quick intro for the video. Uh, this is not a video with uh, best setting and other things like this because the Vaquita don't need it. Uh, it just comes with the best setting for diving, it's a diving camera. So my suggestion is to use the full auto menu, we'll be very happy. So enjoy the video now, ciao! Hi guys, welcome on uh, Ingeborg today in Helsingor Haun here in Denmark. I'm here today to make a um, quick, uh, not really a review, but to give you my impression about the Paralens Vaquita and a few tips and tricks that I've learned in this uh, time using it. Uh, as most of the Danish guys know, I work for Paralens, so I will not make any uh, comparison with other cameras. Each one uh, take what you like. Um, and uh, despite uh, the currents, this is not a commercial, so if you would think that I'm making commercial, just go somewhere else and click on another channel. Uh, as usual, I like to give my personal impression about the products that I, that I show. So, uh, here we come with this uh, camera, and uh, what I can uh, say is, uh, I will compare it with the, here, comes with the DC Plus, that Camera Plus, still from Parallels, the previous version. So. At first look, when I take it in the hand, is a completely different camera. This is so much more feeling and have a feeling of much more quality. So, and of course, there has been a lot of things learned from this uh, little camera. That is already exceptional. I mean, all, all the videos that you see down here, uh, of spare fishing, are done with this camera here. So, I really like it. So, let's start with the Vaquita. Uh, at the first look outside, I have the classic parallel switch to activate the function. I have the antenna with the GPS, I will tell you later, and the Wi-Fi that is now is outside, so Wi-Fi connection is much better. And then we have the ring, selector ring for different functions, and the end cap that is a pull-off uh, end cap. It's not like the, the screw-in, like the, the old the DC+. Plus. Uh, this is very nice for some reasons, the, but there is something to remember. There is always water getting trapped under the ring. If you pull it out like this, here it makes like a bottle cork and it sucks the water by, by the pressure inside the end cap. So when you, one thing I've learned quickly using it is when I lift the cap here, first <laughs> blow it out. If you have a bottle, it's even much easier, just blow out the water and then it's ready or pull it out and then rotate, like make the, the unscrewing movement. There are three o-rings inside here, so it's quite tight. So if you just pull, it just make like a bottle. So I just take it out and rotate and there is no suction happening. So said so that, let's say why the camera has come up with this. The reason is that, as you can see on the back, there is a USB-C port here, uh, SD card clip outside. Uh, and of course the LED screen, as uh, you have seen on the Vaquita reclam, is really, really good. Um, the, the real advantage of having this kind of uh, system, that you can have in future accessories that can actually be plugged behind the camera. If you have a screw system, it wouldn't work. So it would be much more complicated. With this system, you can just plug and unplug accessories that will go through the USB-C and improve a lot the capacity, the possibilities of the camera. I know some of them I will not tell you now, I'm not allowed to tell anything, but it will come, it will be released in uh, due time. Uh, so there is some cool stuff coming up for Vaquita. Um, let's say ah, uh, SD card. Um, the standard, what we say is the, <coughs> sorry, the standard we say uh, to be used is a uh, 64, uh, 128 gigabyte. Well, I've been running since the beginning with one terabyte SD card, zero problem. I even filled it up once, I just plug it in the charger, put it in the water until here, otherwise it would melt everything, it's too much power. And then let it run for two days until the SD card was full, I haven't got any problem at all. So. Uh, let's see if uh, further test the, the rating of the SD card in the Vaquita will be changed also in the specifications. But personally, I'm perfectly okay with one terabyte. So let's have a look to the, to the first function. There's the on-off, classic. Then we have the snap, uh, the photo and snap video. 
a photo snap video is really nice because when I go scuba diving and I see a subject, I want to take a really quick uh, image, just a video. I just keep it press and pointing until I want and then I release and the video stop. Uh, the advantage is that when I go out, I, if I have a full video running like for three hours, then I get a lot of green screen and junk footage that I really don't want and then I have to watch like five times the the video to find the interesting bits. With this snap video I just go down and super quickly with the thumb like click, tuck, take the uh, whatever fish I want to film, the body and the uh, octopus, what, whatever is there. So and I can find it immediately later in the SD card. So is uh, each subject have is a little video so it is actually quite nice. Uh, then we have the video function uh, that is uh, super for me as a free diver and spear fisher because I can set it, okay, yeah, you can put video and then press to activate and then press to stop, classic, but can also be set on auto. So, I mean, I set it on 50 centimeter, put the camera in the mask and then I switch it on and then I forget about it and just switch it off when I go back on the boat or when I go back to the car because the camera starts the video by itself when it reach 50 centimeter depth, take the video, when I resurface after 20 seconds, cut off the video. So, instead of having same three hour long uh, videos with uh, with most surface time because I I'm, I take between four and eight minutes surface time every time uh, and for a uh, one and a half two minutes two minutes twenty underwater so uh, most of the time I'm in the surface I don't want to have that footage of course so the camera just cut it off and give me only the footage of the dive so uh, it's really nice when I make uh, when I mount the videos and I can do it very very fast so I don't have to spend a full evening there looking going through big files. Then there is a custom 1, custom 2 that you can do whatever you want there is also some um, uh, photo log uh, blah 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 I mean I'm not, I'm not in, into that stuff I'm not a really a photographer so uh, some guys will find it very useful and to have different modes. Uh, yes uh, what, what I do is I have a 4k uh, uh, um, always set uh, also in the in the DC plus because uh, sometime when the water is particularly clear I want to take some nice footage on on high very high resolution and then zoom in but that is just uh, because <laughs> nothing else to do with the, <laughs> the editing video but so then there is uh, the settings where you can go in and in this camera you can also set manually the the ISO of the uh, sensitivity, quindi the ISO of the camera and you can set also the shutter speed and that is for the guys that have a they're skilled, they know what they're doing and they can play with that so uh, try to make some special effect or whatever you want I don't have any skill so I just put it full auto and I'm very happy about it also you can adjust the the sensi sensibility and shutter speed when I go inside wrecks and holes so it's just uh, always a good, pretty much a good image it changes pretty fast from being outside and being inside so it just adjusts itself fast um, the, the cool thing of the parallels of course now more or less everybody know but I will repeat is the DCC so digital color correction mean it's like having for every centimeter of depth that you go down having a new filter in front of the of the lens uh, either magenta if the water is green or red if the water is blue uh, the cool thing of the vaquita is that the side by itself you can see if the water is green or blue and apply the correct filter or the correct uh, graduation so it's like uh, going in the water with a bucket full of filters and change it one every second so um, the advantage is that I'm not spending the full day correctly try to get the remove these uh, total green videos that are a bit ugly now. So yeah, I really get the the right color. And you can see in all my videos here uh, they're done with DCC most of them. Uh, when see with the one done with the DC plus, uh, and that's the out um, the manual DCC. With the Bakita you get fully automatic, so it's uh, problem is solved. Uh, yes, of course, sometimes you can adjust, uh, the, uh, for example, the contrast, if depend on how the water is, if it's uh, really dirty or, or not, that, that can help to get a better video. 
but basically there is nothing else to do when you have the DCC on. Um, and I have some friends that are photographers and they tried uh, to replicate manually. Yes, you can do it when you are in a still position and I mean, you don't move much, it's the depth and light is the same. Um, then you get good results manually, if, if you know how what to do. But uh, as a free diver or diving along walls, uh, it's very difficult to to make a constant correction on the on post production because every meter you need to or every piece you need to make a new filter so it's becoming quite annoying. Then there is a function that is um, the log that show the log the the dive curve and the the spots where you have taken the videos. It's going to be improved in the future with possi more possibilities to do stuff on the videos and things. Then we have the GPS. GPS is the function I love on this camera as a free diver, uh, as a spear fisher. Um, the reason why it's been put on primarily is because uh, the camera is ready to share the ocean data that you feel that you collect uh, on a database that will be accessed by scientists all over the world uh, to protect the ocean, which is quite cool actually, give, give a bit of a purpose. So the GPS is uh, fundamental to locate the data. Then there are two little dots here that uh, had a conductivity meter so you can measure the salinity in the water we measure at it the temperature and the depth so basically if there are there is footage coming out of a reef and we have there is enough footage with algorithm they can see the color changing on the color corals they can see so many variable and is very very important consider the uh, oceanographic buoys the one that cost a fortune they give exactly this kind of data. So uh, from now every vaquita in the hand of a diver the, the willing to share his uh, his data is um, is contributing in a massive way and is uh, really is going to improve in some area so the diving area of the ocean especially the coastal areas a huge impact I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. So the GPS um, in practice. Well, the accuracy that I get from the GPS that I measured, uh, both here with the system, the, I have a, a HDS9 here on the boat and I have a, the Hummingbird on the on the rib I use for fishing. The accuracy I have is in the range, I would say, look, to be politically correct, I say half a meter, but it's pretty much on the 10 centimeter um, uh, accuracy. Uh, that's because it's not uh, GPS only. Is not only the American satellite system, the US, is also has the European, the Galileo, has the uh, Russian system, has the Chinese satellite system, the Japanese satellite system, and there is a algorithm or something they get from, I don't know which other satellites uh, they told me, but I don't remember. They basically remove the induced error because, as you know, GPS and other systems, they're governative, so they put uh, an error the need to be corrected in with a specific algorithm. So uh, the camera can actually correct uh, the induced error and make an interpolation between the different position and give an extremely accurate position. Um, these positions are recorded in a, in a log file. So you have the video and then you have a log file under folder with uh, every second the, the reading of the GPS. I've been using it here and uh, I, it actually quite weird because I can get a sort of a signal and a position, not accurate, but I can get a signal even two centimeter, three centimeter underwater. The accuracy could drop down to 20, 30 meter, but as soon as it's outside of the water, the accuracy go back. So what I measured is that uh, after around 30 seconds, 30 seconds and one minute after surfacing, uh, I get the absolutely accurate position of the place where I've taken the video. So, um, and one minute is, I have surface time of four minutes, so it's super good. That means that I, even in the drifting, here in Denmark we make a lot of drifting, so you swim one, one, one and a half kilometer out on, from shore, then you drift with the current, you dive, you find the rocks, you find uh, uh, objects and you see for the fish around there. Um, uh, it's very difficult to find back those stones because the coast is flat, you cannot uh, triangulate with the objects on shore. 
and uh, unless you have a GPS on the buoy or you have a boat following you, you're not going to find the stone again. Also because with 3-4 meter visibility, forget about finding it. Even, even with a GPS it's not totally accurate. With this it's super good. So for scoutings of locations, for competitions, it's really fantastic. You go down with a camera, you see your rock, your stone, take the movie out of it, go back, take the position, you know exactly where the uh, rock is, you know exactly how it look like, you, know, you can create your table and actually go out with that and, and be sure that you find again all the places. So it's quite cool. Um, one mention about the GPS, well it's not a mobile. So uh, I got some guys asking questions. The, the thing is that this is a real GPS, it's a marine GPS system. Uh, so it deal uh, the camera dialogue directly with the satellites. So it just listen directly at the satellite. So to do that, it need to be in visual, uh, in visual, uh, uh, need to see the sky inside a, a house where the camera cannot see directly the sky and the horizon. It will not work. Uh, a mobile have a different uh, different system. A mobile is called a GPS. It's a system GPS. Mean that it get the location from the so it's the, the telephone station that um, speak with the satellites. They get the position, and then with two three different location by triangulation and Doppler effect, the mobile get a position. So the mobile can actually get a position it's even inside the cellar. The camera cannot, is a real GPS, need to see the sky. Image stabilization is not uh, activated in the firmware yet, it's not ready, uh, they're still working on a few details, but uh, the camera hardware wise, I can tell you what it has, it has two gyroscope inside, nine axes each, so extremely accurate and sensible, and have uh, four accelerometers, so it can uh, read, uh, turning, pitch, uh, rolling, everything. So all this massive information is going to be used to have a really, really good uh, image stability. So as you know, the camera has been delayed one year in production due to the COVID situation that make everything difficult to get any sort of components. But uh, now it's finally here. And uh, as you can see, um, the firmware that has been released with is very very basic so it's uh, on constant update at the moment with the uh, release very often there will be a new release now before Christmas and then going ahead constantly to catch back all the functions that actually has been planned from the very beginning. One of the things that at the moment is not there and actually I'm very happy that it's not there is the battery charging indicator so that it, the camera is not telling you when you plug the, the electricity in. Um, I'm a fan of that. Actually, I don't want to have it personally because is uh, I don't like to have the processor using electricity in the moment I try to refill the battery. So uh, I see that I can actually get a much better, uh, complete, full charge without any indication. Uh, how I do that is I use a cable with LED. I mean that when I plug it in, the LED become green, and when the camera is full, the battery is full. It just come turn out to be blue. So this way, with this kind of cable, I got it on Amazon or I can find it in any radio shop. Um, I actually don't need to switch on the processor on the camera. Um, now I know that the, is coming this uh, battery indicator that will need to have something on inside the camera and uh, I really hope that I can opt it out So because I like to have it as it is actually. But um, this is coming now. So, so uh, what else? Let's speak quickly about the accessories and how I mount the camera. One is the mask mount. This is the one I have. Um, really, really practical, very stable, comfortable with neoprene padding. Almost don't feel it. And um, one tip, uh, once the, you have found your, basically the camera go like this, is clipping on the side and then locked with a string. Yeah. So, uh, one tip of advice, once you find the location, the, the position, um, if you do like me, that I put the head in the rocks and things and heat, so the camera always take get heats and go wherever, I fix it with glue. I put uh, two components, uh, this quick epoxy in, that's it. So now you can heat it and hammer it and 
take a lot of punishment it will not move the the will always point in the right direction whatever i do uh, and because my I, I i have the high ear and i don't want to have the strap pushing on top of the ear for many hours it's painful i keep the mask strap actually pretty high on the head and therefore the the camera tend to be like this so what i've done i have warm up a little bit the plastic and bend it a little bit to be to be right so um, for, I have other accessories, but I want to speak about those later. One thing that uh, is cool is the mechanical fix here, aluminium, to fix it on the spear gun. So it's going to be really, really stable. Never mind the recoil, the camera will always put straight, will not flip forward. So this is the last detail. The rest we're going to speak later on. So I hope you enjoy this video and uh, i will continue to make some videos especially with um, side by side comparisons i will not give my opinion on those because i work for in parallel so it is my private channel but still i don't want to do that but i will put raw footage of different cameras and the vaquita together uh, on what i do so you guys can decide without any opinion from my side but you decide which one you like most so when you have a project you want to take some videos you, you can choose just knowing what is coming out raw out of the cameras so yeah a quick update for the battery time i just measured the new firmware the 2051 i've got uh, three hours and eight minutes of battery time or total battery time with a, a maximum length of a single video of two hours six minutes 45 seconds and this is a fixed value due to some settings uh, necessary to save to close the last uh, file but um, i haven't got any problem as free diver because with the auto function it just start and stop the video every time i make a dive so there's no limitation there um, i already notified that and will be changed in the next version so the firmware when everything will be optimized even more so um, if you want to take uh, a single dive video long more than two hours uh, after two hours six minutes you need to restart and you have another hour more or less to take uh, to take the video so uh, but that's another reason to use actually the snap function uh, which make everything so much easier but basically uh, keep updated with the next version of the firmware because uh, yeah it will be constantly improved so uh, have a nice time ciao